The next gen car has brought out a lot of good for NASCAR. We've seen great racing and a lot of parity with the sport. Having 14 winners in the season is something that we haven't seen in NASCAR in quite some time. But there is one growing concern regarding this next gen car and it's the most important aspect of a race car safety. Now since 2001 NASCAR has done a tremendous job trying to make the sport as safe as possible. However a lot of people are concerned on whether this car is a step forward or maybe even a step back from NASCAR in terms of safety. This of course is revolving around Kurt Busch who crashed in Pocono during qualifying on Saturday and had to sit out for the race on Sunday due to him suffering concussion-like symptoms from that crash. Now having a driver sitting out for a race due to concussion or concussion-like symptoms is nothing new, but it's been a long time since we've seen that happen. The last time I can really think of is with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now racing we know is very dangerous. It's never going to be a completely safe sport. However, a crash that Kirk Busch suffered on Saturday, for him to suffer a concussion or concussion-like symptoms and be forced to sit out for a race is very concerning to a lot of people. According to reports, Bush's hit was not the highest when it came to G-forces. NASCAR likely will classify it as a medium hit. And overall, throughout this first season of next-gen racing, multiple drivers have come out saying that the hits lately they've taken with this new car have been a lot harder than in previous generations. Joe Logano, who has raced in two previous generations of NASCAR Cup cars, said that these cars, they hit harder than ever. It's super solid and that it really hurts. But Corla Joy provides a different perspective on things. He mentions that yes, a routine normal crash may hurt more, but that's because that the next-gen car is designed to take massive impacts, like Newman 2020 Daytona crash. He said that the cars are designed to handle the worst impacts when it comes to the driver's compartment and that the designs has made what used to be a relatively routine crash hurt more. Now NASCAR is always trying to collect as much data as they can revolving around crashes. At Pocono, seven drivers wore mouthpieces designed to record information during a crash. Four of those drivers wore them during Sunday's race. Not only that, but NASCAR also has black boxes in the cars, and all cars have a high-speed camera which focuses on the driver that records when a car spins, allowing NASCAR to see video of how much a driver moves during an accident. And according to a spokesperson at NASCAR, they say that the sanctioning body has done more safety testing with this vehicle than any previous car. Now, this whole narrative between next-gen and safety it's not new. It's been going on since, but even before the season began. Remember the whole test dummy dying at Talladega a few months back? That happened prior to the 2022 season, and even then, by that point in time, we were having concerns with safety with this new car. But here's the thing. With this next-gen car, we do know it's very durable. We've seen time and time again drivers get caught up in small accidents and basically come out without even a dent, it seems. Or at the very least, it doesn't hurt their performance and they're able to continue and be competitive for the final laps. But because of that, when small accidents do occur, they tend to hurt more. But I look at Kirk Busch's concussion at Pocono kind of similar to Dale Jr.'s concussion issues back in 2016. Now, there are a lot of variables to this. Jr. has openly admitted he has had numerous discussions, 2002, 2012, and so on. With Kurt, this is the only one we have known. It could be the only one, but we all know with concussions, athletes like to keep them quiet. But I want to bring up this quote from Denny Hamlin regarding Kurt's crash. Hamlin said he hopes Bush will miss only the Pocono race and that he will have a personal doctor this week to get cleared for the upcoming event at Indianapolis. But it's this quote that we need to focus on. I'm very confident that Kirk can be back next week. He's had a tough year as far as hits are concerned. This one definitely didn't help. And that's one thing I want to point out. How in the world is a crash like this that's so small seem insignificant, a crash that happens all the time, force a driver to sit out a race for concussions? Simple. This is Kurt's sixth accident in the last 12 races. Let's go all the way back to April 17th at the Bristol Dirt Race. In that race, Kurt Busch runs in the back end of Austin Dillon, spins and slams to the outside wall, driver's side with no safer barriers. The very next weekend at Talladega, coming to the start finish line, Kurt Busch gets tapped by Kyle Larson, sends him hard into the outside wall, collecting his teammate Bubba Wallace. Two weeks after that at Darlington, Kirk Busch gets caught up in a crash, spins and slams head onto the inside wall on the back stretch. Three weeks later in Charlotte, Kurt in another accident, runs into the front end of Ryan Blaney, then gets turned and goes head on into the outside safer barrier wall. 
And then six races later on July 10th at Atlanta, he gets caught up in a big accident with Corey LaJoy. And then finally, two races after Atlanta in Pocono, Kirk Busch spins in qualifying, backs into the outside wall, and that's what forces him to sit out from Sunday's Pocono race. And it's that Atlanta crash I want to point out. Apparently, Kurt Busch's crash at Atlanta, which was a very hard hit, was so bad enough that the team was considering sitting him out for New Hampshire. On the latest episode of Door Bumper Clear, they discussed Kurt Busch's latest incidents and talked about the Atlanta crash. You know, obviously he he failed concussion protocol. Um, there's not, it's not, I mean, who, who are you going to pick from? John Hunter Nemechek, Ty Gibbs. Brandon Jones. Where do you go after that? Like, Brandon mean, Jones wrecks every week. I wouldn't pick that guy. <laughs> no, I mean, it was essentially, there was a rumor. So this, listen, this hurt, this hit by Kurt was, is not the biggest hit we've ever seen, no, obviously. No. Um, but Kurt has had at least three massive hits this year. You know, he had a big hit at Bristol earlier in the year. Um, he followed that up like the week after with a big hit at Talladega at the start finish line at the end of the race. And then just a couple weeks ago in Atlanta, he was the he was the wall for Corey LaJoy. When Corey got turned back across, he took a massive hit there. The first Atlanta, he wrecked hard. <laughs> and there, yeah, yeah. There and then there was some rumors after Atlanta that John Hunter might have to fill in because you know you just it wasn't feeling great. It was a hard hit. So you know when when I heard the news Saturday morning, I had heard Kurt was out and uh, Sunday morning, and then um, I assumed it was going to be John Hunter. So that's the story. It's very concerning. Sometimes it takes multiple hits over a period of time before finally the one that broke the camel's back forces you to sit out. And that's what happened with Kurt Busch. In the past two months, he has suffered seven hard impacts while racing. When you look at the Pocono race at face value, it doesn't make sense. But when you collect all the races from the past, bring up Talladega, you bring up Bristol, you bring up Darlington, Charlotte, and Atlanta, and all of a sudden you have a lot of ingredients that sets up for disaster. But this is a problem. We haven't seen the next gen car go through a hellacious crash like what we saw with Ryan Newman in 2020. But is this really a concern or is this just a product of racing? Like I mentioned, racing is never going to be 100% safe. There's always that risk of injury or even worse than that. But again, I like to bring up Dale Jr.'s 26. 16 crashes. I know Junior's and Kirk Bush's incidents are a lot different. Junior has had numerous concussions in the past and 2016 didn't help whatsoever. But I, then again, it's a bunch of crashes, small incidents that took place over a period of time. And the Gen 6 car at the time was deemed the safest car NASCAR's ever built. Again, Newman proved that. So is this more of a next-gen issue or is it just a product of racing? No matter how safe you build a car, a driver will never be 100% safe. And with Kurt Busch, it was very unlikely and just extremely unlucky the circumstances he was in to be put in so many incidents continuously over a short period of time. It was very rare but it happens in racing. I don't know, the more I look into this and the more I look into the history of NASCAR and the generation of cars, yes, we have seen less injuries take place, but we've never had a generation of cars where injury was non-existent. That's never happened before. So do you think this is a next-gen issue? Again, we do know with this car, when it takes small hits, it hurts a lot more. That's because the car is more durable to be able to take in more hits and be able to continue racing without any issues. But again, I like to point out that we have seen racing in the past in previous generation of cars where drivers have taken hits, smaller hits over a period of time, and then finally when they have one major crash, they have to be forced to sit out. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is just a product of racing, the risk of competing in excess of speeds over 160 miles an hour? Or do you think there is a deeper issue with this next gen car? Tell me in the comment section down below. Until next time, my name is Jet from MDK. Thanks for watching.